Welcome back to the final round. We have eight states holding their primary elections today, the biggest voting day since the coronavirus pandemic. And as voters head to the poll, we have Joe Biden back on the campaign trail, giving a speech today in Philadelphia, his first in what has been quite some time. So for more on this, I want to bring in Rick Newman. And Rick, it's interesting. I was uh, reading through the speech, listening to some of the comments that Joe Biden was making, and it was a very stark contrast to what we have heard uh, from President Trump, especially as it relates to the protests that we have been seeing over the last week across our country. And I think that was the point, Shauna, uh, to give uh, people, voters, uh, a different idea of how somebody might be able uh, to handle what's going on uh, in so many different cities and is so upsetting to people. So I think what's important here is Biden left his home. This wasn't he wasn't broadcasting from his basement. He was uh, at a hall in Philadelphia, as you pointed out. So in a way, he's I mean, he's back on the campaign trail. Philadelphia is obviously in Pennsylvania, which is a swing state. I'm not sure whether he has any uh, travel planned uh, coming up, but he's getting back out there. Uh, the cable news networks picked up his speech and carried it live. So if you're for those of us following the campaign, it kind of feels like the campaign is back on after Biden kind of went to ground around uh, mid-March when the quarantine started and the uh, national stay home guidelines went into effect. Uh, and what he said today was, uh, he, you know, he uh, exactly what you would think Joe Biden would do. Very conciliatory, uh, empathetic, uh, lots of nice words for people suffering uh, during what's going on here. Nice words about jo George Floyd and his family. Uh, he did attack President Trump, so it wasn't... Um, it wasn't all hand-holding, um, and he basically said, look, uh, here's what I would do if I were in this situation. He outlined some criminal justice reforms. He said Congress should get started on now, not wait until Joe Biden is president, start passing laws now. I, mean, I don't think they are going to start passing those laws, but um, he's back. I think that's the <laughs> main takeaway here is that Joe Biden is back, finally. Yeah, and Rick, I wanted to get in into, into some of that new legislation that he did propose, that he did talk about. Uh, he wanted to prevent chokeholds, stop sales of military gear to police departments and along those lines. So it will be interesting to see the type of reception and the response that he gets to some of those proposals. Yeah, there is a proposal to, um, to stop the sale of U.S., I think it's surplus military equipment uh, to police departments. Um, that's been controversial. I'm not sure that's likely to pass Congress. I mean, we know that um, the, the priority in Congress now is probably going to be a fourth uh, stimulus bill to help people still struggling from the other crisis. One of the other crises, I guess I should say, because we have three going on right now. That's the uh, horrible uh, recession and 41 million newly unemployed people. Um, but, you know, Biden is um, he's trying to give people an alternative to what people see with Trump. And by the way, Trump, uh, you know, some people feel Trump should give this kind of address to the nation in prime time from the Oval Office uh, and try to calm everything's, everything down, urge calm, or urge everybody to get together. He obviously has not done that. In fact, you could argue he's done the opposite. Uh, he claiming to be now the law and order. He wants governors to, quote, dominate uh, the streets uh, of the cities in their, uh, in their states. And uh, of course, as Jess was just discussing, uh, he had uh, some protesters, some peaceful protesters gassed and removed yesterday so he could take a walk over to that church next to the White House. Rick, you know, we've heard a lot of the demonstrators over the last few days say uh, the way to take action is obviously not by rioting, but voting. And, and I keep hearing that thinking, we always hear these conversations, how much of that actually materializes at the voting booth? We're still months away from the November election. Is there anything that you see that suggests this could actually be a tipping point in the presidential election? It's a big question because uh, one of the reasons Hillary Clinton lost in 2016 is black turnout was considerably lower than it was in 2012. Uh, if turnout had been the same at, uh, in 2016 as it was in 2012, she probably would have won, because uh, that, that would have been enough to tip the vote in at least three swing states that were very close. So the question for 2020 is, can Joe Biden get black turnout numbers back up? Because they will overwhelmingly vote for him if they vote. That's the big thing, is getting people to vote. And uh, one of the ways Joe Biden can um, perhaps influence this is by uh, choosing a black woman as his running mate. I mean, that's, you know, sort of the uh, political drama at the moment is Obama has, uh, excuse me, I, uh, Biden has said he will choose a woman as his uh, running mate. Will it be a black woman like Kamala Harris? Um, you know, Amy Klobuchar, the senator from Minnesota, seemed to be one of the leading candidates until the George Floyd murder. But I think she, you have to say she's out of, run, out of the running at this point because she was involved in something having to do with the same cop um, who uh, 
basically killed uh, George Floyd. And um, that, that prosecution was controversial. And it just associates her with uh, Minneapolis and with Minnesota. So I don't, it's hard to imagine Biden would do that now. So maybe that raises the likelihood that it will be a, a black woman who he chooses as his running mate. Hey investors, Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up to the minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance and information on how to manage your money every day wherever you are.